arrays. But for the beginning part, we add all of this in. So all the lubrication holes. So every part of the detail that you see on the screen, on the drawing, that you will add in, even with the section that we have here. Okay, we have center lines here. And here there's also threading. Okay, so it's quite small. So there's also threading that I see on this part. Okay, so that is my pin completely set up. Now at this stage, before you even start assembling components, because you know that this is a lubrication hole, you can already add your grease nipple on the top of this because you know you'll add a grease nipple on here. You can already say, because I know the grease nipple is going to be here, I can already add it and I just draw it in. And making sure I have a place where the grease nipple ends. Okay, so very important here. I'm going to draw an expanded view of this because this is something that you often make mistakes on. Remember a grease nipple is the same as any bolt. So that hole that we had, it has threading up to a certain point. But when I screw this grease nipple in, the grease nipple will end somewhere before the threading. So this indicates the end of the grease nipple. And at the top, then I just have my grease nipple part. But it's important that you realize that there is a place where it ends. And also when you're sectioning, so th this is quite small because these lines are quite small, but when you are drawing and you have this detail, remember that the section will run up to the outer edge of this assembly and where there's nothing bolted in through the threading. So if you've forgotten how this works, it would be a good idea to relook at your standard component um, tutorial where we look at how to draw basic bolts and nuts. Okay, so then I've added the grease nipple. Already here, I've added a standard component. I don't know yet about the rest. However, when I went through my logical connection, I did see that around my pin, I have this bush. Now it's important when I'm adding things together that I make sure that I check the dimensions. Okay, so looking at the dimensions, I see 54 in total length and 54 in total length. But here they give me a 12 up to the outer edge of that lubrication gap. And here on this drawing, I see it's nine up to the center. They give me a four diameter of the lubrication hole, which means if I'm here at the center, half of four is two, so there will be two extra. So up to this point, if I had to say how far is it from the edge here up to that point, that will give me 11. Okay, so this hole is slightly bigger than that 11, but it will completely align over each other, which is really important when I'm starting to draw this on, onto my drawing. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to draw this bush on and I also look at the thickness, right? So the thickness here was from 19 to 25. How thick is this head? It's 28. So it's not completely up to the outer edge of that head, but it's slightly lower because there would be 28. Here is 25. I'm going to have it end completely at the end of this pin head. And on the outside, I just have a straight line. And I know it's 54, where this bottom part is 54.5, so it doesn't end completely at this edge. There's a slight difference there. The same at the bottom. And now I know I have this information here on the inside, and I know that that lines up with <clears throat> the component that I have here. Okay, so again, you can look at the dimensions here. This gap is 6. What we have here is 9, so it will start at 7. So it means that we have this part of the bush running completely over and along the lubrication holes like that. Okay, so once we've drawn that in, we can do the cross-sectioning for the bush.
And then we have that part of the assembly complete. Now the second part that we've already indicated is the fact that the wheel will fit on top of the bush. So when we look at the wheel, we know that the inside is 54. So here we have our wheel. The inside is 54. The diameter is 25, which is exactly the outer diameter of the bush. So all we need to do is just redraw this exactly on top of that bush. So exactly as we see it here, we redraw that shape. on top of the bush that we've already drawn. Okay, paying close attention to the outside part of this wheel that's slightly wider than the inside part. So see the outside part is slightly wider, so it's 76 where the inside is 54. So again it's important here to look at how far over this will come and you'll see that it actually comes into the grease nipple space. Okay, again we can section this. And then that's that part done of the component. You can see that I haven't drawn in these lines yet because there's still going to happen something on this side, so I'll remember to add them a bit later. But let's first see what I have happening on this side. Now remember if I had my schematic, I saw here that I have my wheel and it goes into this arm component. And I've already identified that, that this is my arm component, so it's basically going to be this, just turned around into the orientation that I have it on my schematic. So now what I do is, I look at what, look, what this component looks like, and if I place it on here, I need to know where I am going to place it against. This diameter is 16, which means that I can place this component right against the shoulder that I have here, because this part is 16, and I will push it against the shoulder, and most likely I will add a nut on the outside to make sure that everything fits together. Because as I have it currently, I can just pull this out on this side. I can't pull it in that direction, because in this direction it's fixed against the wheel. But from that side, if I pull it in that direction, I can pull out this whole assembly. So now I'm going to add this part of the component here. And again, I'm going to look at how big these parts are. Okay, so if I look at the outside diameter here, I have it as 30. Now remember the outside diameter of my bush was 25, which means that this part of the component will be slightly higher than my bushing. So that's how I know how high that goes up. And it's a straight part. How far does it go? I know from my dimensions that this part of the pin, if this is 20 and this is 45, then I know this part is 25. So that length is 25 but this length that I have is 30. So it's going slightly over into the threading. Okay, so the part here is slightly longer than the threading. And so I just draw that in as I see it. So that's the top part of it. You can already section that top part. And the bottom part here, I must make sure that I have all the details of these neck pieces. So remember it's a there's a rounded corner there, so very important to notice that I have a rounded corner there. So drawing in that rounded corner, and then it comes all the way down. Now when you're looking at how far down this will be, we can look at the distances to, to see how this makes sense. So, on this side we have 4, then we have 15. If the total has to be 30, I have 11 left on that side, okay? So 4, 15, 11 gives me 30. That's the 30 in total. So this gap must be 11. How does it line up with my wheel? So if I'm pushing this almost exactly against that part of the wheel, there's a 0.5 difference, but that's almost exactly on that part. What is the difference between this and this edge? Now remember we had 54 and 76. So there's a difference of 22, which means that the total difference is 22, which means on either side here, I will have 11. Okay, so if I have 11 on either side, it means that 11 here and 11 there, they'll almost exactly coincide. There'll be a small gap because of the 0.5, but this portion that I have coming down here, so I'll just have to extend this to make sure that I have this almost exactly lined up right. 
because that gap is 11 and then we have 11.5, so there's a small little gap in between, but they almost line up exactly. And then of course I can draw the rest in of that wheel that I originally left out. Now I continue by drawing this part. For now let's just draw it up to there. Sectioning through. And now I know that is where the arm will sit. Okay, on this outside edge, I have nothing keeping this assembly together. I would need to add a nut here to make sure that the assembly doesn't fall apart. So I can just add a normal nut. There's no need to, uh, to add a castle nut or anything special because there's no indication that there's a special nut required here. So I can just add a normal nut on here. And remember to go through your slides to know how big the nuts are. The nut is wider than that component, so I'm adding the nut on here. And there's a small part of the component that's sticking out on the side. Okay, so just make sure there's a lot of double lines and things here, because I've now just drawn over it. Of course, you'll have the ability to erase some of these parts. So make sure when you look at the memo that you, that you see which lines will remain here. Okay, so just as an indication, I'll have my nut like that. I'll have the top part of the component sticking out like that, and at the bottom there will still be a bit of that, that threading that I have. Okay, so that's how that assembly will look. And that's the full part of that top assembly.